Hello everybody and welcome to Artie's tutorial videos and today I'm going to show you how to install a Minecraft public server. So a lot of people have been asking me like okay Artie how do I install a public server? How do I make one? Um, so yeah a lot of people have been asking me about it so I figure I'd just uh, help you guys uh, help you guys install the uh, Minecraft 1.8 version uh, Minecraft server. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to minecraft.net so this is where we get our server so we click the download button and of course you have to log in make sure you register on minecraft.net of course and right down here where it says multiplayer server this is where we need to download it if you have windows uh, it's this little link right here minecraft underscore server dot one point dot uh, one dot point eight dot exe so right down here once we downloaded it, it's going to be in our downloads folder. It will be like an executable file. So what we're going to do, so basically if I click on it, it's going to create this uh, Minecraft uh, the ex exe file. So if we show in the folder, this is basically what's going to look like. So uh, when we do that, we got to right click the .exe. So we're going to right click it, cut, and then we're going to go to our desktop here. We're going to create a new folder. Now you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You can just name it server or just like M server for Minecraft server. doesn't matter. I already have a folder set up so I can just show you how it's done. So we're going to right click and paste it. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click this. What's going to happen, it's going to create uh, uh, some files into this folder. So it's going to create logs, and it's going to launch the uh, Java panel. As you can see, there's nothing here. Um, usually in the uh, older versions of Minecraft servers, for this uh, Java window, there would be like text on the right-hand side, but for some reason it's not. Um, I guess it's a bug they have for 1.8, I don't know. But anyways, we're just going to click stop. We're just going to type in stop in that panel because we don't need to use it. As you can see, server properties have already been created. But as you can see, there's no files uh, developed here. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to right-click the elu uh, .txt file and we're going to open it up, and then we're going to set set it to true instead of false. I don't know why they set it to false when we uh, downloaded the thing. So it's kind of weird. So so. Once we set it to true, click file and save, and then we're going to double click the server file again. And what's going to happen, it's going to create uh, all these files in here. So it's got uh, the world, the band IPs, the band players, the ops, where you can like have like set up moderators or admins for your, uh, for your uh, Minecraft server. Uh, this is where you'll edit your server properties, uh, user cache and whitelist. So we're going to minimize this for now. So in the server properties, um, where we're gonna, I'm just going to actually delete this because I already have another folder up set up already. So I'm just going to show you how do I set up everything. So here, I'll just move this over here. So in here, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to double click uh, we're going to do the server properties first. I'll show you how to create a run.bat. That's the next thing we're going to work on. So so we're going to double click server properties. I already have it set so it set up, sets up uh, notepad++. plus plus. Um, so we're going to do here. So here's the server properties. I don't know if you guys can see that but actually yeah we're there we go. Now we can increase it so you guys can see. Um, here uh, we're gonna do. We're gonna scroll down. Now, in some settings, there's gonna be like true and false uh, set to all these settings on the left. Now, it all depends on what you want to do. Um, like I allow the Nether is true. I think it was set to false last time, so I set it to true. Game mode is zero. Um, usually, the game modes are zero, one, two, three, and four. Zero being survival. One being creative. Uh, two being, uh, I'm not sure where the other modes are, but usually you want to set it to either zero or one, okay? 
Game mode zero is survival and game mode one is creative. So I pretty much just, that's the only two game modes that you really need to worry about, but everything else should be fine. Uh, difficulty, I usually leave it at one, which is normal. Uh, zero, I believe is easy and three is hard, I believe. So I think there's three difficulty, uh, I think at least three or four difficulty levels, but I'm not too sure. Um, I leave uh, spawn monsters is true. Uh, let's see, any, uh, announced player achievements is true. PvP, that's if you want a player versus per, uh, player. Again, you could set it to true. Uh, I think level type is default. Uh, hardcore is false. Uh, let's see, okay, max players. Now, th this is a por important one. So, uh, it all depends on your computer, uh, how much players are going to be joining your server. So, you can have uh, up to 10 to 8. Like, I set my max to 20, but you have to make sure you have a good beast machine for your computer. Like, I have a quad-core CPU. Mine's an AMD APU 88A series uh, CPU. It's a quad-core 3.6 gigahertz. Um, or I think it's a 3.5 gigahertz base clock speed CPU and it also has at least 16 gigabytes of RAM um, so the RAM is going to be very important uh, when it comes to setting up the Minecraft server I have 16 gigs so I can sacrifice at least some RAM to run the Minecraft server and still be able to uh, do a you know move around the computer and stuff so I highly recommend to get at least 8 gigs of RAM or, or more if you want to start a Minecraft server um, I highly recommend to get 16 at least at least 16 gigs or higher I ha like if you have at least 32 gigs or 64 gigs maxed on your motherboard for RAM motherboard RAM or desktop memory uh, pretty much that's fine uh, you'll be all set for that so RAM is gonna be very important for that all right so the next most important thing uh, is the server port number. We need to actually port forward to set up the public server so people can join our server. So we set the port number to 25565. That's the default port number for the Minecraft server. So we set it to that. And then we, uh, let's see, we set the level name. Now your level name is equivalent to your file name. So we're going to pop this up here. And you see on the top here, it says uh, uh, Artie's World is my level name. So we match the file type, the name file type, to level name. So that's how you load your levels. So if you have a different level, like for example, if you download mod levels or any uh, levels that uh, your friends created and you downloaded, um, you can cut and paste it in here. And all you have to do is change the level name so the server can load up the level. Okay, so that's how you load it up from there to join the public server. Because if you play in single player, that's a little bit different story. But that's another tutorial video later on on how I show you how to install maps and play it on single player mode. But anyways, um, so that is basically uh, how do you load your levels. Uh, spawn animals is true. Whitelist is false. You want to make sure to keep that false. Um, general, generate structures. Online mode is true. Make sure you, make sure you set it to that. And message of the day, you know, you can set it to welcome to Artie's public server, blah, blah, blah. So once you have all that set up and ready to go, you just file and save it. And then you just exit that out. And then we go back to the server folder. folder. And what we want to do is we want to create a run.bat folder. Okay. So we want to right click. I'm just going to edit it for now. So basically, this is what you need to do. All right, in the bat folder, we need to, uh, in my description below the video, I'll show you how to, uh, it's basically we need to set up a file name extension to launch Java, the uh, Java program itself. So basically when I run the run.bat uh, file, it's going to run the executable file, and it's going to run the server at a certain amount of memory for my RAM. And basically, I want to launch the executable file, pretty much, and set it to the equal to that RAM for Java. So, these numbers in between here, this is what we need to set. This is very important, okay? 
this is how we set up the RAM for the server to use. Like, I want to set up at least 2 gigs of RAM for my Minecraft server. So this 2048 is basically equivalent to 2 gigs of RAM, okay? Um, it all depends on your RAM. Um, I have 16 gigs, of, 16 gigs of RAM, so I set it up to at least 2048 megs of, uh, of RAM slots to use for the Minecraft server. So I highly recommend to try at least 1 to 2 gigs of RAM. I highly recommend at least a minimum of 2 gigs of RAM for your server, but that's probably all you need. Um, if the server starts to lag with more people joining the server, then you're going to have to increase your uh, megabytes to equivalent to the RAM, and pretty much that's how you would set it up. So uh, to set up the file extension to launch Java, I have to show you an extra step. We're going to actually open up our control panel. We're going to go to System Security, and we're going to go to System, and then we're going to go to Advanced System Settings, and then we're going to go to Environmental Variables, and then we're going to go, we're going to scroll down where it says Path, I believe. Hold on one sec. Uh, I believe the Path, I believe, is. I think that's the right folder. Uh, I think it's the Path folder. Yeah, I believe it's the path folder. Yeah, it's the. I think it's the path folder. And in the path folder, what we want to do is we're going to click Edit, and we want to switch the variable value to this. It's C program files Java JDK 1.7.1.7.0 underscore zero two slash bin. I'll put that link in the description below, and that's how it will set up the uh, launch command for. Um, for the uh, for the launching the commands for the uh, the server, so that's how we launch the Java for that. So I'll put that in link in the description below, so you guys will take a look at that, so you can copy and paste it in there. And that's all we need to do. And then we have to set up this. Like I said, I'll copy and paste all this stuff in the description below where to set up the run dot bat. Okay, so um, actually the run dot bat will not be in the uh, server folder, so you have to right click or open up notepad uh, or pretty much open up notepad and copy and paste everything that was put into the uh, description of the video and just click file save as and then you want to save it as run.bat and make sure when you when you click save as make sure to set it as all files okay and this is how uh, you'll save as a bat file so make sure you save the save as type all files and then you want to uh, just name it run.bat so I'm just going to click cancel and click exit out of this stuff. So and the bat file will be created for you, the batch file. And then every time you launch the server, so let me double click. Uh, I think the server is already running. Okay, so let me stop this. So let me click stop. Uh, so when we double click the run.bat file, this, uh, this uh, command prompt will open saying that it's launching the Minecraft server which in case it did so it did launch it um, so as you can see we have at least 95 percent free of make space already created uh, I would in the older versions again the login chat was there but now for some reason it doesn't work um, as you can see this is working so the test that the test that it's actually working we're gonna actually we're gonna launch our minecraft uh, game so I'm just going to load up and take like a couple seconds. And uh, the next step I'm going to show you is how to install, um, basically show you how to install your public IP address and set it as a domain name instead. So, and I'm going to show you how to pour forward first before I actually go and do the uh, no IP stuff. So we're going to press play. So we're going to launch the launcher and then we're going to load up the servers. I'll show you how to edit the how to show you how to uh, do local host um, and actually join the server itself. So I'm just gonna let that run in the background. I'll just let that launch. This might take a couple seconds to load. Um, I actually have uh, resource packs installed for this uh, Minecraft version um, and some maps that I installed a little bit earlier. Um, so as you can see I have a different uh, texture pack installed alright so 
So what I want to do is you want to click multiplayer and then as you can see my server is already running. Um, that's because I'm running no IP right now. Um, so let me uh, launch no IP. Um, let me exit this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to so I'm actually going to refresh. Okay, it's still working. Okay, so let me click edit. So as you can see, I already have local hosts already set up for this. Okay. So this your local host is found by looking at your command prompt, which is in here. Okay. So actually, I think we could still run it without bothering this. So we're going to do... Oh, no. I guess... Hold on. Let me see if I can recreate... Okay, so I have to open up a new window. So to figure out your uh, local IP address, you want to do IP config, uh, IP config, or just type in IP config slash all. I think. Hold on, let me double check this. Okay, um, it's probably running because I have a batch file, but. Um, so to get your IP address, you can also go to your server settings. So you have to type in IP config, and then once in there, uh, it will say your IP version four address. That's your local IP. That's your local host IP address. So mine is one dot one one eighty two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one thirty eight, and then you want to set the port four number. Okay. Now the server name, you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, and then we just leave server resource packets prompt. We press done. And then we want to join the server. And it's logging in. This might take a bit to load up. It's going to download the uh, terrain and stuff. And so as you can see, I have the texture packs already set up. And as you can see, my arteries world has been loaded. And my texture pack is different, so it might be different from yours because I have a different texture pack. But as you can see, everything is running smoothly. I've been in here before, so um, so yeah. So that's how you uh, start up your own server. So we just disconnect. Now, <clears throat> so as you can see, it's working. But to set up the um, the no IP, okay, we're gonna set up our own uh, public IP address to this, okay. Uh, to set up that, what we're going to do is, I'm going to launch this up again. Let me close this out here. Okay, so in the link in the description below, um, we want to download a program that's called No IP. Basically, this program, what it's going to do, it's actually going to set up a free domain name attached to our public IP address. Okay, so once we're logged in, we're going to click My Account. And then under here, we're we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually block off my uh, public IP address. I don't want that shown, um, so I'm just gonna censor that out. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click your no IP, and then on the left hand side, I believe we're gonna do manage hosts, and then under manage hosts, hold on, let me double check your no IP. Okay, and then we're going to click on Manage Hosts, okay? That's what we're going to click on. We're going to click on Manage Hosts, which will bring us to this page. And once again, I'm going to block my public IP address again. Um, and under here is the, D, uh, the DNS, uh, basically, uh, my server thing. So we're going to modify it. And underneath here, again, once again, I'm going to block my IP address again. Um, so under here... What we're going to do is we're going to actually um, use the uh, the DNS host A. Your host name is basically uh, whatever you assign it to. Okay. The first time it's going to be blank and you can fi uh, fill it in. Um, and you can fill it in whatever you want. So I picked DNS host A. And then your IP address is left alone. And there's no group. And that's it pretty much. And then you just click update host and, or create host. Wherever it will be. And then once that's done, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to left click here, uh, download client. And then this client is basically where we're going to download it. For, it's for Windows. 
and this is where we get to actually use our IP address to uh, create our client. So we're gonna click uh, DUC. And we're gonna click refresh, and basically this is where we have our own command right here. And then here, this is where you have to log in your account. So you have to log in with your username and password. Uh, you have one host. So once we click on edit hosts, uh, basically this little uh, thing will come up and basically this is where we have to make sure we check it and click save and because it was already created and your public IP address is below and pretty much that's how we will set up our domain name to our public IP address so we're just gonna hide this for now since we don't need it anymore uh, to set up the port forward what we need to do is we need to go to our router settings so the router settings to access it is your IP4 address, so you just type it in the browser. So mine's a Linksys. And then we're going to type in our password to log in. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to click on security, go to apps and gaming, go to single port forwarding, and under here we're going to click uh, do application name, Minecraft server, you can name whatever you want, doesn't matter. So the external internal internal ports will be 25565 and the internal will be 25565. Protocol will be both. And your device IP, device IP will just be your local host, which is your IP version 4 internet uh, settings, which again, you can um, run it through the uh, server. So actually, I'm just going to stop my server. And I'm going to show you uh, how to access it because of the batch file that was running. Um, uh, for some reason I can't, hold on, let me right click in server admin, I don't know why I can't, I think if it's not recognized as an internal external, hmm, IP config, huh, uh, that's, <laughs> well, well, you have to type in IP config in your command prompt. Hold on one sec. Uh, I'll see if I can figure this out. Hold on. Let's see if I can just right click. I'm just going to run as administrator. Let's see if this works. Okay, there we go. I have to run as administrator. Okay. So now we have our command prompt run finally. Alright, so this is where we need to figure out. Our IP i4 address is right under here. That's how you fi figure out your uh, local IP, local host uh, address. So sorry about that, folks. Uh, so that's how you do your IP4 <laughs> version 4 address. And you want to enable it, set it to true, and then click save. So click apply, press OK, and that's it. So that's how we set up the uh, port forward to our server. And setting up our public IP address to a domain name. Now, to actually send it out to people, what you want to do is you want to uh, click your server IP address. Uh, you, you have to let them type in as follows. So mine's got to be Artie's server, Artie's server dot ddns dot net. So that's how you set it up and plus the port four number. So colon 25565. That's the whole entire e uh, server address that people need to type in to, or to access it to my server. Okay. Now, since I don't need the public IP address because technically the local host is my server, so the way to access is 192.168.1.138. So I'll just click done. And basically, uh, you can refresh just to make sure. The reason why I can't connect because I shut off my server. So, all right. So, now we set up uh, the file extensions to run the bat, bat files, okay, and then we have to set up the, uh, so we run our bat file, we also installed the server, we set up the server properties, we set up the port forwards. So now the next step is to, uh, we're going to actually create um, uh, what else is the next step I was supposed to do uh, let's see 
we can uh, learn how to set up the oh yeah Norton that's right we have to pour uh, since I have Norton I have to set up a uh, pour forward to Norton okay so this might be different for some people okay all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go to security and then we're gonna do manage firewall and then we're gonna go to I believe traffic rules and then somewhere down here I believe there's a Minecraft firewall uh, basically we have to add and then we're gonna click allow so we're gonna click next uh, we gotta set up uh, connections from computers and we're gonna click next and we're gonna do uh, any computer I believe so we're gonna do any computer click next uh, protocols it's gonna be TCP and UDP and allow all types um, all the ports listed below uh, all types of community all ports local and remote so basically all the ports uh, or just two uh, two five five six five I believe uh, I think there's a port range no okay so it's just all types and then click next uh, when packet is from that uh, I think we just click next after this and then we create uh, what do you want to call this rule uh, you can name it uh, again once again you can create it as minecraft I just created it as minecraft uh, firewall which I already created but I'm not gonna create it just yet and then we click finish now since we uh, hold on we didn't set up the port forward number uh, we're gonna add a port forward number. Oh, individual. Uh, we need individual specific ports, or we can do the port range. So actually, yeah, we're gonna do the uh, local locality. We're gonna click remote and port range. We're gonna do uh, two five five six five, and then we're gonna do two five five six five, and then press OK must be lower than the ending port okay or just in uh, I guess we're gonna do individually specific ports so we're gonna do 25565 okay so that's gonna be a remote port or a local port oh I'm sorry actually um, hold on we're gonna click remove and we're gonna do add local actually I think it's a local port number but hold on one sec uh, actually I'm gonna modify this so connections okay so here we go I'll show you from here so modify rule we're gonna do allow allow connections to match this rule we're gonna do connections from other computers so computers it's any computer um, communications is gonna be T TCP and UDP and then we're gonna this rule only apply if matches all ports listed below so it's gonna be a remote port and it's gonna be 25565 okay and then we'll click advance again nothing is checked here and it's just a Minecraft firewall and that's it that's all you gotta do is set up the uh, Minecraft port forward number to traffic rules so you can actually access it through the uh, firewall so once again uh, that's uh, how to set up a Minecraft server using your port forward number and using how to get the public IP address now to get your public IP address uh, most likely all you have to do is set up a no IP account and it will automatically show up for you so you don't have to set it up at all so just make sure to create an account on uh, noip.com all the links will be in the description below and all the uh, descriptions will be all there for you to copy and paste uh, to edit the uh, run.bat file and to set up the, um, the environmental variables and once again the uh, command prompt I was having some issues earlier only because I need to uh, the bat file is uh, overcharging it as an admin so I have to uh, make sure I run uh, run the uh, command prompt as administrator and basically that's how I will basically run and how to get the uh, IP version 4 address so I hope this helps um, if you guys have any questions um, about like uh, how to set up a public server so once again uh, you'll use your no IP domain name uh, as the public IP address to let your friends connect to your server and so you gotta make sure uh, 
when you run the server, make sure you run the run.bat file, not the executable file. So make sure you use the run.bat file. And once that's run, and make sure you, make sure your server's running. And then, but once again, this is not a dedicated system, okay? If you want to create a dedicated server, you could. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can buy your own server if you want, or buy your own separate computer so you can only install Minecraft on there, and that will be like a dedicated server. But you got to make sure your internet's up and running on your own end. Uh, but again, so that is how to install Minecraft public server. If you guys have any questions or concerns about uh, anything I just mentioned, um, please uh, comment down below in the video. Or if you have any questions, uh, just message me on YouTube. Or you can follow me on Facebook.com slash RDStudios. Or you can follow me on uh, Twitter.com slash RDStudios. Um, again, all the links will be in my description below. To follow me on Facebook or Twitter, you can ask me questions there about it. So, I'd like to all thank you for watching. And I'll see if I can do... Uh, my next tutorial video will be uh, how to set up a texture pack. And also how to set up... Uh, how to install maps on Minecraft. I'll catch y'all later. Thank y'all for watching.